Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Rachel Varga and thank you so much for joining us on the Rachel Varga podcast. As you probably know, I'm a board certified aesthetic nurse specialist, but what this podcast is really all about, as Stacey Lindsay just laughs in the background here, it's all about the body, mind, spirit energy to really bring forth optimal vibrance and radiance in case you haven't clued into those underlying messages in all of my interviews here. This isn't just how to apply your products, you know, what to do for this or what to do for that, for brown spots, rosacea, acne scars. Well, of course I talk about that as well. But what we're really going to dive into in this three-part series with Stacey Lindsay is just going to be sharing a lot of love and light and inspiration to help you become your most vibrant and radiant self. And I'm so thrilled to have Stacey Lindsay here. She is a multimedia journalist, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about her here. She's an editorial director and a writer and multimedia journalist. She is the contributing articles editor at Goop formerly an investigative reporter and news anchor at CBS and Fox, and a contributor to various design and culture publications. Stacy grew up south of Boston, earned her BA in film and media studies from Emerson College, and her MA in journalism from University of Colorado at Boulder. She is a Compass Quest Veterans Advocacy Group board member. And I'm just so over the moon to have Stacey here. We had the pleasure of meeting in New York. And I just knew right away when you got on stage, we got to meet. So thank you so much for joining us. And just, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, Rachel, thank you. I knew that too. The second that you walked up to me, you were this major illuminating light beam that was in front of me. And I thought, who is this amazing woman? So thank you. It's, it's so good to be here. It's, I'm so glad to be in each other's orbits and to know you. It's an honor. And I didn't mean to laugh before too. I was giggling with glee because I love what you're saying. I love the message that you're getting out there and how you've just been lifting up other women, other people. It's so needed. So thank you. Mm -hmm. But this is, yeah, this is, um, this is so exciting. And I love, of course, I love talking to other like-minded women and I, of course, love talking about anything that has to do with really tapping into our vitality, our purpose, really feeling like our feet are firmly on the ground and that we're looking straight ahead at our path and what we're supposed to be doing. Because I think the world is a beautiful place, but it's also a really, really tough place. And a lot of times, many of us sort of stay small or we get lost. And I think it's just important for us to be lifting each other up and doing that. And I've been lucky to try and do some of that work through my journalism. And then more and more when I meet women like you, I just get, I get more, and more and more excited. So, but I'm, I'm thrilled to be talking with you today. It makes this work really fun. It does. It makes it, it just makes it seem like we're all here. There's a reason why we're all here. Cause sometimes I do wonder, I think, you know, what are we doing here? What's the purpose? And I think it's to tell each other stories. I think it's to lift each other up. And I think it's to just find the light really. Mm -hmm. So before we get into the overview of this three part series, I really just want you to take a snapshot of you listening to either the audio or video of this incredible interview that we're going to get started on just shortly here. Go ahead and tag at Stacey Lindsay and myself at Rachel Varga official and at unlock your vitality. You can find Stacey Lindsay at Stacey, A N N Lindsay.com. So Stacey with her middle name, A N N Lindsay.com. And then you can hang out with me at rachelvarga.ca or unlockyourvitality.com. So without further ado, I'm just going to give you guys an overview of the three episodes that are going to be in this incredible three part series. We're going to do one long one, but. We really just kind of wanted to segment this because we really identified three things that we, we absolutely want all of you guys to learn from us. So episode one, we're going to talk about how to cultivate vibrant radiance, what that really means, and how to unlock ourselves, how to step into our power and not stay small, and what are the most vibrant women in media doing, and how to kind of look beyond that facade and this is going to be really interesting because Stacey Lindsay you're a mega insider with some of the biggest health you know quote-unquote icons out there so you Thank have you. a pretty wild perspective yeah <laughs> yeah and I can't wait to get into this I'm thrilled thank you so for the first episode here we're going to dive into how to cultivate vibrant radiance. And this is different than say what you're seeing on 
say in an Instagram post or pictures of these celebrities or, you know, people outside doing this pose or their yoga pose or wearing, you know, the latest fashion or showing off the latest makeup palette. So what is vibrant radiance to you? What a beautiful question. It is really having peace with yourself and it's really being kind to yourself. I think when you're kind to yourself, you manifest and you nurture this ability to be kind to other people. And then that just, I think that echoes through the world really. And that ultimately creates vibrance. It creates vibrance within yourself. And again, it creates vibrance within other people as well. But it takes, it, it sounds easy. I know anything I think sounds easy when you talk about it, but it really, really takes intention. And I think it takes practice. And then it takes real genuine belief. And then that belief has to be in yourself first. But when I feel kind to myself, when I am kind to myself, when I'm generous with myself, it just translates, I think, into feeling and I think looking my most vibrant self. That's what I believe, at least. It's not, you know, there's so many amazing things that we can do. There's so many amazing uh, products we can use and foods we can eat. And I believe in all of that. But ultimately, I think it's just a, it's a sense of being and it's a sense of kindness. Mm -hmm. And it's your whole frequency. Yeah. I mean, do you think that, Rachel? Do you feel that too? I sense that, just that kindness from you. I get that when we met. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like the more you get into that, world and that space. So for me, that's actually what I've been sort of uh, really honing in on and trying to understand a little bit more of mm -hmm. what is radiance? What really right. is that? Because it's something you, you can't really measure actually with, with any of the technologies, right? We have technologies to measure the skin elasticity or the skin's humidity, mm -hmm. but we don't have anything to measure that quote unquote yoga glow. Yeah. And I feel like radiance is there. Um, you know, with our, with our vibrancy, we can do different types of photographs to actually see what our energy fields are doing. This is really neat. Some people think that they can actually see sort of our alignment, if you will. I actually did some really cool work actually right before we hopped on the call with one of my mentors that I've been working with for nearly 10 years. And it's just something that I've just spent so much time digging into. And why is so that I can share it with you guys so that you guys can learn to kind of cultivate it? Because I saw it in you right away. <laughs> you know what I think is an interesting analogy is when you look at somebody and let's say you look at, you know, when we talk about beauty, for instance, if we are going to talk about beauty, that is something that is really, really subjective right? You may think beauty is something or something may be beautiful. And I may not think it's beautiful, even though I think you and I are on the same, <laughs> on the same frequency, but it is, it's, it's subjective, but there's a feeling, a feeling of beauty that I don't think is subjective. I think everybody, when you really sense it, like somatically, when you experience beauty somatically, it's across the board. I feel like everybody experiences that. And one thing that I think of is you may look at somebody's face and you may think, okay, and if they're just, they're, they're not smiling, they just have a serious expression on their face. One person may think that particular person is beautiful. Another person may think that particular person maybe is not beautiful. But when that person smiles, I believe it is objective. Their beauty comes out. And I guarantee you both people would say that person is beautiful when they really fully smile. So I think that's kind of a way to describe what we're talking about where, because a smile comes from within, right? It's, it's actually, a smile is almost bigger than the face. It just radiates off the face and it shows, it expresses somebody's kindness. So it's hard when we're talking about this stuff. It's so, it's so exciting and it's so amazing. And it's also sometimes hard to talk about because it's on a different frequency. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, you know, it's, it's almost like it's bigger than us. Yeah. I, I think mean, about the smile. I get it. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. <laughs> and then some of you miss listening probably do as well. And then some of you are like, well, what the heck are they talking about? So this whole podcast is designed for women who aren't wanting to be that 99%. And the reason I talk about this is because I actually had a review that said like this, like, Rachel isn't grounded in what 99% of women are doing. 
yeah, I totally agree with that. This information is for you guys to help to really develop and cultivate yourself and get away from what mainstream media is trying to tell you that you have to do to be beauty, to be beautiful. You're not going to learn this stuff in most of the publications out there. And Stacey, coming from you as you know a veteran in multimedia journalism, how do you answer that? Oh, it's taken a long time. I mean, it has taken a long time. I think, I think I always had the answer. I think we always have the answers. I think, unfortunately, what happens is we go through our lives, our careers, um, whatever it is that we go through. We go through all these things that we become more and more conditioned. And you mentioned, Rachel, you know, mass media, or mainstream media, you know, these messages that it tells us. I think that what... I have had to do and what I think other people I recommend doing is actually trying to really focus on how you used to feel when you were younger and sort of going back to that inner child and really honoring that inner child. And you'll find that the messages and the wisdom was really there at a really young age. And again, it just like systems or whatever, sort of kind of chipping away at it and making you think otherwise. And again, conditioning you to not feel like you're enough, to not feel that you're beautiful enough, all of that. Um, but again, as an adult, it's taken a really, really long time to sort of get that back. And I think so much of it, again, I, I keep going back to kindness, being kind to yourself. And I say generous too. It's a word that I love because we have to, we have to be that in order to, to kind of be at this place where we are okay with ourselves, we feel beautiful and vibrant, and we're not going to be listening to all these messages that are told to us from various women's magazines, from various publications. You know, I think sometimes the intention is good, but a lot of times these publications make us feel like what they remind us of what we're not, and they don't remind us of everything that we are. And people like you, Rachel, are, of course, are changing that messages and reminding us that, no, we are so much and we're so full and we just need to lean into that more. Mm -hmm. It's so much more than what your beauty routine is. It's so much more than that. <laughs> yeah, it really, it really is. And it's, and you think about, you look at these ideas too, and, and going back to, I said earlier about beauty is subjective. It's a feeling, I think, but real kindness, that that's objective. Again, that's, that's not subjective. That's so evident. Um, but these ideas of beauty and you know, what we're supposed to look like, they're so arbitrary too. kind of who designed this idea, who designed that we, who said that we have to look this way or we have to act this way. I have no idea. Some random person, maybe it was some random man, you know, how many years ago. And it's like this, it's created this wall or this, this almost brick wall that we run up against and continue to break ourselves against. Mm -hmm. And that brick wall is just, it's a fallacy. It's a total fallacy. So I've just, and I didn't see that brick wall when I was going back to the, the inner child. When I was a child, I didn't see that brick wall. No, no such a wall existed. I was just me. So I try to tap back into that. Mm -hmm. It's helpful. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So what you talked about of radiance being a feeling, one of the things that I like to share is that beauty is a feeling and a quiet confidence that comes from being perfectly aligned or as close to perfect alignment as possible with your body mind spirit and of course you need to add that energy aspect part of it because literally everything in our universe is energy right it is things it aren't is. solid things are actually always moving and vibrating and that's just you know i have a physical sciences background i've taken gen chem organic chem biochem you know, I'm a bit of a nerd, right? I don't have my glasses to push up right now. <laughs> but it's a scientific fact. And I really feel like radiance is obtained through beautiful alignment mm -hmm. of all of those facets. I agree. And you, and again, you, that goes back to that somatic feeling. Yeah. You just, you just feel that, you know, it's everything, but oh, I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. And what you talked about being a kid, when I was growing up, I was a massive tomboy. I was into mm -hmm. cars. I loved woodworking. I rode dirt bikes. I played electric guitar. <gasps> you rode dirt bikes. I rode dirt bikes too. There we go. <laughs> yes. So that kind of stuff when we grew up doing I really feel like cultivated confidence at a young age. So if you're a mother and you have a daughter or, you know, I do have male listeners here, about 25% of this audience is men. If you have a young girl, encourage them to do these quote unquote, not so feminine activities because it will add to their 
confidence, their well-roundedness, their resilience. Resilience too. That's another thing. Just honoring that and building that resilience. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. So how are you so radiant? Tell me your secrets. <laughs> it's, well, it's because I'm looking at you. That's why. <laughs> it takes, thank you. <laughs> you know, I, um, I, I had something, I have to say, thank you for saying that, first of all. So I am humbled and, and, uh, and really flattered and grateful that you're saying that. I feel like there is, I have a responsibility. And I pause a little bit because this, this is so in, you know, it personal and intimate to talk about. But I, I lost my dad 12 years ago. And I feel that every day I live without him here is a responsibility to do both fulfill what I wanted to do and to fulfill some of the things that he was not able to do. This man was, and still is, because I still talk to him, he's still here with us, but the most radiant, vibrant human being I've ever, ever met. And I actually remember watching him, um, I had the, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to actually sit with him during his final few hours with us in this lifetime. And I just remember looking at him, still his, his vibrance and his radiance was still there. And so I feel, like I channel him constantly, but I'm also constantly thinking about, okay, when I get down, when I get feelings of despair, when I get overwhelmed, depressed, all of those things, the natural, anything on the human spectrum that I feel, I honor it, but I also think about him. And I think, okay, I need to find my strength. Again, I need to find my kindness for myself. I need to find my gratitude and I need to lift up out of this to honor my father. So I don't know if that answers your question, but that's really, really what I feel is I actually, it's about honoring my dad and thinking about him because he ultimately was the most vibrant man I've ever met. That's beautiful. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. And then it's just, when I feel, again, I love the word aligned, but when I feel aligned with what I want to be doing and what I really, what I've always wanted to do and what I continue, you know, I hope the future holds this for me. It's such an honor is to do journalistic work, is to tell stories, is to disseminate, you know, great research and good facts and people's incredible efforts. When I'm able to do that and when I'm able to connect with people like like yourself, Rachel, you know, and other incredible change makers and light givers, I think that just bounces off of, you know, whoever I'm the messenger, but it just bounces off of me. So, yeah. And then also, you know, drinking a lot of water, (laughs) right? (laughs) I'm like constantly drinking water I'm too. <laughs> and hydrated, which can't be, I can't say it. I can't say it enough too. Yeah. <laughs> and good sleep. Yeah. And so one thing that, you know, we're just going to give, we're not going to beat around the bush here. Stacy and I, uh, if you've ever read books like by Rebecca Campbell, Light is the New Black or My Sister Rise, those are two of my favorite works that actually really inspired me to start showing up. And I had never heard of this word light worker before. Mm. And now I just constantly am hearing it and other women that kind of identify with that. And, you know, I'm sure you identify with that word. Oh my gosh. So much. That was such a gift too. When you told me to read her work, such a gift, but yeah, I, I identify. Yeah. How would you describe a light worker? And do you find that women that, identify as that are a little bit more quote unquote radiant in your opinion? I think so. Yeah. I think it goes back to what I said a few minutes ago, just about this is, um, you know, when I was was talking about my my father just saying that it's actually a responsibility, I think. Um, If I were to describe other light workers, I would say that they are in full realization of their responsibility to shed light, to lift people up. It, it just is. Um, and I think when you're, if a light worker is maybe feeling down or feeling like they don't have a lot of light to shed, it's probably because maybe they're not being, again, kind to, their self, to themselves or generous with themselves. But it's a responsibility, I think. And it's, inc- it's just incredible to see the residual effects after you meet somebody who is, I think, a natural light worker and you're surrounded by them because they do what they do. They shed light on you and they kind of lift you up and ultimately make you feel make you feel better. But Rebecca is particularly fascinating too, is because she, or I should say fascinating. She's so amazing and so um, 
accessible, I should say, because she's so honest with her journey too. It's not like she suddenly came and dropped down on the earth and she was a sparkling diamond. She is a sparkling diamond, but so much of why she is an effective and successful light worker too is because she does the work consistently. She's a human like everybody, you know, she's got, I'm, I mean, again, I don't know her yet. Hopefully I will know her someday, but her words and, and talking about other light workers words too, is they're honest with the fact that they weren't always in alignment. They went through major, major, major pains and down points, and they still have to consistently work on it and still face it every day. And again, look at it as a responsibility. Like, no, this is what I'm here to do. Be in alignment, do my soul's calling. So ultimately it helps other people too. Mm -hmm. I think that the more that we kind of spark other people that feel like us, the more we're all just going to come together, right? Yeah. So please share some love to Stacey and I. Tag us. Tag, tag me at Rachel Varga Official at Unlock Your Vitality and Stacy at Stacy Lindsay. And just give us some words of encouragement. Leave a great review. Leave a nice comment and just share this message with, you know, one of your friends or family members that okay, I think that, you know, this could be something that's aligned with how, you know, so-and-so is, is leading their life where they're wanting to learn more about this. I think that this is just a really great way for us to offer uh, some light in a time where there's a lot of shadow in this world. I know that's what I feel really called to do right now. Yeah. It's so true, Rachel. I know you are too. <laughs> yes. No, it's, it's, yes, I am. I am. And I think, this time too, it's, it's important to talk about the, the gravity as well. Like this is, life is very hard and life is quote unfair too. Um, there's a lot of things that we can't always make sense of them. And I don't think that it's our jobs to necessarily make sense of it. I think it's our jobs to do the best we can with what we have. And, if, and again, to shed our light as best we can, how we can. And particularly right now too, where there's a collective a collective kind of mourning for the life that we had, which was just a month ago. And I have positivity that we're going to have that back, hopefully in a better and more beautiful, honest form. It's going to be but an right evolution. Now, it's going to be an evolution, totally. Yeah. And there is a lot of uncertainty right now, though, too. So I think it's important to talk about that within that context, too, that this is as important, if not more important, to be owning and to be listening to and paying attention to right now. Because... You know, you and I have talked about this before, Rachel, a little bit is earlier today is just also, I think it's common to feel feelings of despair right now, potentially feelings of depression, all of that. It's individualized, of course. Um, my feelings might be very different from somebody else's, but understanding having these conversations right now and homing in on this, on this alignment, on this self-worth, on this self-generosity, so, so, so key. Mm -hmm. What we're really stepping into and what we're in the middle of is a black swan. So it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's at, at, at points of our human evolution, we've either like with the internet, with World War II, these are all examples of black swans. And there's always going to be a balance that is going to be obtained at the end of it and an evolution. So if you feel like you're getting pulled into that sort of, a negative field, just realize it, be, you know, gracious to yourself, understand what's going on around you, but don't stay there. Yeah. Yeah. And again, be kind, be kind yes. to, to all the process. Others, yes. Right? Yes. So when we're talking about radiance and lifting each other up, cause that's, you know, radiant women, that's what they do. They lift each other up. They're not saying, Oh, you look tired. Oh, you have like big eye bags. You should see somebody about that. That's not really no, 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 no. Ever. <laughs> I, I love this story. I share it. It's a very quick story, but again, it goes back to my father who was so kind. But I remember I was quite young, I think I early 20s maybe, and um, I still am quite young. <laughs> but you know, it was just kind of when you're just forming your identity too. I think I might have been a, still a teenager, but regardless, I had a boyfriend and he was this lovely, is this lovely person. I just didn't we weren't a fit. I didn't really want to continue with the relationship. I didn't really want to be with them, but I didn't have the language and I didn't have the wisdom to really do it in a, I didn't really know what to do with that yet. And I remember talking to my dad, I just said, dad, I'm just not really, I don't know what I said exactly, but not really into him. And 
my dad said, nobody wants to feel bad, Stacy. He said, it's okay if you want to break up with them, but just do it in a really kind way and just see that person. Because of course, you know, as a teenage girl or, you know, early 20s girl, you're just thinking, oh, I'm done. I'm going to move on. But it really stuck with me too. And he said that nobody wants to feel bad. And I don't think anybody wants to make anybody feel bad. And if there is such a case where somebody wants to make somebody feel bad, it's really just a reflection on what's going on inside them. So if you do come across a woman, maybe that does say that too, because I, unfortunately I have been, I don't want to say victim, but I guess the subject of many comments like that many, many, many times of, oh gosh, you know, whether you look tired or something. That's well, you're also in there. LA, which is, oh, it's yes, ultra, this is sort of like capital. Mecca for some of that. But it, you, you, you learn though that you think, oh my gosh, you, I, I try to at least pause for a second and think that has nothing to do with me at all. Even if the comment was technically about me. It's everything about that person. And that person is actually probably hurting right now. Mm -hmm. So what I want to talk about next in this three-part series is how to sort of navigate around not staying small, Mm. right? And working through sometimes where we receive comments that could be to the effect of maybe you shouldn't do that, or maybe you should just do this because it's already good enough. Doing the inner lifestyle stuff before doing the in-clinic rejuvenation, it's really just going to maximize what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Your colon is so critical. And I'm a huge fan of clean products, paraben-free, sulfate-free, artificial dyes, fragrance-free, not tested on animals, research-backed products. These are all things that uh, I I think are really important. But, you know, don't be fooled. I love using the super ultra clean body products. I Mm -hmm. I think that's so key. I'm obsessed with this locally made, you know, pineapple oil right now that one of my fellow, um, you know, female entrepreneurs in my community uh, she just dropped off like, I think, 30 of them for me. <laughs> Pineapple oil. Whoa, that sounds yummy. <laughs> yeah. So there's so many great products always coming out. And I love learning about all these other wonderful peelers who are trying to make an impact themselves. Mm-hmm. So the more we support each other and collaborate, the less we're in competition with one another. That's just how we, we help spread love and light. To all I agree. Guys. That's so beautiful. I agree. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us, everybody, in this episode of the Rachel Vargo podcast, whether you caught the audio version or the video version on my YouTube channel, you can just search my name, Rachel Vargo, you'll find my YouTube and go ahead and check out in the link below uh, access to my free treatment planning guide and my skin cheat sheet where I basically list off some of my favorite at-home skincare tips to just kind of get you started and get you on the right path and then my daytime planner. So you can get that at rachelvarga.ca. That's my personal site. You can also head over to unlockyourvitality.com and check out some of my other uh, teaching resources as well if you're wanting to do a little bit more of a deep dive. And please tag myself at Rachel Varga official on Instagram. Share this episode with a friend or family member and send a message, give me your email, and then I get to send you a free gift just for you. So thanks for sharing this because we don't advertise. This is all word of mouth. And don't forget to give a lot of love to Stacey Lindsay. I'm so honored to have you on here. Oh my gosh. So take her at Stacey Lindsay on Instagram. Definitely share some love to her as well. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Talk to you for hours. <laughs> oh, there's going to be many, more. I have many, many, many more, but thank you for what you do. All right, everybody. And until next time, we will, we'll see you in the next episode here on the Rachel Varga podcast, or if you're watching on the Rachel Varga YouTube channel.